So maybe we can start. Hello, everyone. Everyone, I hope you're all doing well despite these very special times. Thanks for joining this webinar and for taking some of your time to hear more about Admari's business model and how we work actively to translate our leading academic research into an industry of scale. We really see this as a first general introduction and we want after this meeting to follow up with each institution or SMEs individually and explore potential partnerships. Few words on my role and background. My name is Munyazi. I'm leading the program development and partnerships at Admare. My background is in neuroscience and I have experience working in academia, in the biotech industry, in capital investment firms and in transnational organizations, mainly in Montreal. I will give you a very high level overview of who we are, our mission, track record, overall capabilities, and then I will let my colleagues and partners, Lana James and Laura McIntosh, to introduce themselves and present you our focus area, our uh, current portfolio, and some specific recent case studies that will give you, I hope, a sense of how we work with our partners. Uh, during the presentation, please don't hesitate to ask all your questions using the Q&A uh, section, please. Uh, we will have some time at the end to answer your questions. And if we don't have time, we will make sure we connect later on and further discuss. So let's start. First slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. So some of you are certainly familiar with the previous entities that now form Admari, namely CDRD and Accelerex in Vancouver and the Montreal Institute in uh, the Neomed Institute in Montreal. These groups have decided to get together to create an organization that would have a much bigger impact in our sector. Next slide, please. We all know that Canada has a spectacular research infrastructure that punches well above its weight on whatever metric you choose, but we're not so good in translating this research into a sustainable life science industry. So our vision and main raison d'être is really to address this challenge and to help building the Canadian life science industry at a level that is commensurate with a strong research leadership, uh, leadership across uh, the country. Next slide, please. So how are we doing that? By doing basically three things, and I will get back to describe each of them in more details. First, by translating leading academic research into companies of scale. Second, by helping existing companies scale up. And finally, and very importantly, by training the next generation of highly qualified personnel to drive the growth of these companies into strong anchors. Next slide, please. Important to emphasize that academic research is really at the core of all our efforts. We are proactively looking to work with academic researchers on that key translation point between scientific innovation and commercial development. Next slide, please. For each of our stakeholders in the Canadian life science sector, we offer a distinct and compelling value proposition. For academic researchers, we identify the potential commercial value of promising research and advance and translate these pioneering work into validated investments and new opportunities, new companies. For the life science companies, we provide all the essential catalytic resources needed to successfully advance the technology pipeline and scale up as a company. For investors, we offer new validated and de risk opportunities for investment. For current and future industry led leaders, we develop talent through our adapted training programs. And finally, for our federal and provincial government, we generate an important economic value. Next slide, please. 
So over the years, Admari's predecessors have contributed to the creation and growth of a significant number of well-known life science companies across Canada that are pro now part of our portfolio. I will not go through all of them, but you know probably well care of. We first identified for this one the commercial opportunity, the antibody drug conjugate platform. We have recruited John Babcock and the team to exploit the opportunity and successfully develop the technology that when finally merged into Zamworks, greatly helped one of Canada's most promising biologics company increase their pipeline, attract new investment, and begin to emerge as a new Canadian anchor. Uh, another example, a great example, is Sukara, for example, from uh, in Toronto, uh, which, which shows how we bring together various partners, in this case, University of Toronto, York, TIAP, etc., doing the needed development work, create company, and then attract investment to ena enable it to now scale up. Next slide, please. So the results of this work speak for themselves. On aggregate, these companies that we have created and supported have raised more than 1 billion investment and created more than 800 jobs. This speaks to our ability to stimulate co-investment by private investment investors early on and help also enable those early stage life science companies to successfully create sustainable uh, value in Canada. Next slide, please. So to help our sector, we are structured as a single stop destination to translate so research into companies of scale. This is done across four dimensions, which are equally important. Expertise, infrastructure, partnership, and capital. Let's speak first about our expertise. Next slide, please. Yeah. Um, next slide, please. So our leadership team is composed of people who have developed products from the laboratory bench to the patient bedsides and to understand the important commercial pathway. We have a deep uh, and complementary expertise in drug development, company creation and scale up, commercialization and investment. This group work closely with scientists and other personnel in both Montreal and Vancouver facilities to support our partners, whether academic researchers or entrepreneurs. Next slide, please. We work with a team of over 50 scientists with industry experience and drug development expertise. This team provides in-house R&D support, manage outsourcing activities via our network of CROs and partners, and provides also project and data management support. Next slide, please. I will not go through this list, but just to mention that our in-house R&D team provides broad capabilities in both small molecule and biologic drug development, such as target selection and validation, uh, in silico medicinal and analytical, analytical chemistry, antibody generation and characterization. We have a group doing formulation and drug delivery, another group doing pharmacology and toxicology, etc. Next slide, please. In addition, other functional teams within Admari bring commercial know how around IP management company creation and financing, and also access to regulatory expertise, which has, are both so important when it's term to grow and to uh, create a company. Next slide, please. So in addition to this expertise, we provide to the benefit of our programs and the Canadian life science community two state-of-the-art R&D facilities one in Vancouver and one in Montreal, with both small molecule and biologics capacity that can house emerging uh, companies as, as they develop. So the facility in Vancouver is a 40,000 square foot laboratory and office space directly located on the UBC campus. The Innovation Center is, in Montreal is located at the Technopark campus. It is a 100,000 square foot facility that works as an open access drug discovery hub, which is hosting over uh, 20 different CROs and biotech companies and offers specialized analytical support and animal facility. 
We are currently expanding the Montreal facility with the construction of a 50,000 square foot R&D center that is almost completed. It will open officially, hopefully by, by the end of January. And among that, uh, that uh, expansion is the accelerator program, which is a, a two year program that we uh, launched in July in partnership with City of Montreal and the government of Quebec, to which we will support uh, pre-seed and seed stage companies up to a stage where they will be able to raise uh, more capital. Next slide, please. In terms of training, this is also a very important part of our mission to train the next generation of highly qualified personnel by the growth of Canadian companies. I would just like here to highlight that we have different programs in place. You've probably heard about the Executive Institute that has launched its the third cohort recently. It is a very strong and compelling leadership program for C-level executives like, like a mini MBA. Next slide, please. We have also just uh, launched a new online program, the Bioinnovation Scientist Program that is now open for, for applications. It is built on uh, Admari Postdoctoral Institute successful track record. This program is mainly focusing on helping transition of strong scientists, bench scientists, academic lab scientists into industry uh, experts. Uh, you can find all the details of uh, these programs in our website. And if you need more information, I encourage you to contact us and we will put you in contact with the, with the people that are running these programs. Next slide, please. Partnerships also are fundamental to our business of translational research and commercialization. So in addition to all our in-house resources in terms of expertise and infrastructure, we have access we have access to a very extensive network of collaborators and partners across Canada, but also around the globe. Uh, this represents a huge advantage when we need to find the right expertise to further develop a specific program. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of financing, we all know that capital is often what is critically missed at uh, the very early stage. And frankly, it is often the main reason why research groups and startups approach us in the first place. We benefit from strong federal and provincial government support, but also from revenues generated from our past investment portfolio. This allows us to both invest in promising technologies that require additional validation, and as well also as support companies to proceed and seed capital investment. Next slide, please. I will let now uh, Lana James, my, my, my colleague and partner, take you through our areas of focus, our current portfolio, and some specific in-house programs that we have recently launched. Lana, over to you. Great. Thank you, Munya. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure to um, be meeting you all virtually today. And thanks for giving us your time. We know it's one more webinar and everyone has done a lot of webinars over the past nine months. So we do appreciate your time. Just to introduce myself and what the role of Venture Partner does here, and another one of my colleagues will speak after, I will, who's another great venture partner in our Montreal site. Um, I'm located here in Vancouver. And uh, what a venture partner does is really help source and work with you as the PIs and SMEs to look and see what the most the most um, the most ex expeditious way that we can help translate your science forward. And that's critically what we do. And I joined Admari about three years ago after about 20 years in industry in different capacities, um, including time spent at Roche and Basel and um, also at QLT. Some of you may know that company here. It was one of the Canada's most successful spin-out companies out of UBC and at one time had a $10 billion valuation cap and got several drugs approved. And um, I think that to me, it's a, it's an, a great example of what um, great innovation and great PIs in British Columbia can do and build here. And uh, when I joined QLT, there were 550 employees in Vancouver and globally. 
and uh, there were commercial stage programs, clinical stage programs, and preclinical stage programs. So we know that we have what it takes to do excellent science, build great companies here in British Columbia. And at Admari, we're committed to replicating that model and finding new models um, to move forward and find a way to translate your science. Um, one of the other things that we do um, as an example is we work with groups like Creative Destruction Labs, who's been our partner um, on uh, helping young SMEs and ventures to help advance their technologies. And um, this is another way that we help the community. Next slide, please. So I'm not sure if the slides are advancing. Um, I can't see it yet advancing. OK, thank you. Great. So firstly, what are we focused on? We're really focusing, as Munya said, on really translating leading research into new companies of scale. And how do we do that? And this is at the heart of why we're here talking to you today. We work really hard as a team to identify opportunities and build those partnerships. And we have a seamless team internally that's been built and strengthened over the past few years so that we can look at your technology, work with you to understand the promise and potential around your technology, think about how we might be able to help really translate that towards the clinic and also towards building companies of scale. Or if you're a newly formed enterprise, a smaller medium sized company, we worked to work, we work with you to really try and understand how we can help accelerate your development. Um, and that's really at the heart of uh, what we do. We roll up our sleeves and work with you to understand how we can help you and your technology. In terms of some general uh, guideposts for us, the therapeutic areas that we generally focus on are oncology and neuroscience, which is not surprising. Um, given the large amount of funding and also focus in Canada and British Columbia in those two areas. But I also want to focus on the fact that we have, an, we have an area we call opportunology. And what that means is if you have an interesting technology um, and you think there's a compelling and differentiated opportunity around it, we'd love to hear about that too. We're not afraid of, of opportunities outside of oncology and the neurology space. Typically, the stage of development that we're looking at is early um, preclinical development all the way through to IND enabling studies. Um, and the type of criteria that we look for, and this is really important when we perhaps they have members of their uh, academic teams who are interested in helping to translate that technology perhaps beyond their PhD or postdoc. We look for innovative science and differentiated approaches um, that address unmet medical needs. And why do we do that? Well, we know that these are the critical factors um, that can help attract investment capital to help you drive your technology. And investment capital sounds a little bit like, is well, is that just capital you want to grow a business? No, effectively, investment capital is the oxygen that drives your innovation. And the best way to do that is to be able to have inv an investable technology that um, can drive towards commercialization. And that's what we help build around that. And so this is the last point, which is we will work with you to identify and build out a technology development and commercial path. And a lot of times, early stage academic research it's difficult to see that path. Perhaps some of you are PIs who haven't started a company yet. Perhaps you're um, graduate students who haven't done this before. And we're here to help. That's what we do and that's what we specialize in. So we can help bring that to uh, when, we, when we look at your technology and help um, sort of track out that uh, pathway together. Next slide, please. Okay, and how do we do that? The other part that we do is when we date, when we roll up our sleeves and work with you, we think about how we can build out that program. And what that means is we work with you to develop that plan and budget. Typically, it's over a 12 to 36 month time period. And that plan will have clear go, no go milestones that generate critical data sets 
that enable the technology to move forward and move towards um, attracting investment capital, um, either in an existing company or can support the formation of a new company. We can help you with agreements. And we know that a lot of times this is, these are the types of activities that are expensive to um, access when you are a PI or an early stage company. We can, for example, we can help you in the negotiation of license agreements. Um, what the typical approach that we take is that we will have a risk, we will have a risk um, reward type relationship with you. So we will look at, we will look to be able to make an investment in you, whether it's um, in kind and or a financing into your company. And uh, typically Admari will take in return an equity position um, in a future company or a company that currently exists based upon what's commensurate with our, um, uh, with our um, activities into the company. One of the critical things we also can provide on is IP management. And this is really critical as well. A lot of times there's a first patent application that's been filed, but a more global IP strategy is needed. And this is something that we can really help with um, and that um, it doesn't run on the cost of an hourly basis that a lot of you have run into, I'm sure, with working with IP attorneys out there. And this is an important point, that you will retain full ownership of your existing IP. Admari does not look to take a position in that IP. Next slide, please. Great. And um, the next thing we do is we've gone through this process, we've sourced the opportunities, um, we've built out and explored development plans and budgets with you. And then we look, if you're not already an existing company, we look to help you create a company around your technology. And um, what the other things we can help with, in addition to building out those development timelines and helping you develop a robust IP strategy, is we can, we can bring in members of our team or help recruit additional members to put an experienced management team in that company with you as well um, moving forward as a member of the company to really try and grow those companies and um, what we'll do is really together work with you to build as I said that really compelling business case that can really secure private sector investment. I'm sure many of you are uh, constantly seeing um, new companies being created out of the U.S. and elsewhere. And technology, particularly in the healthcare space, is growing at a speed that is unprecedented. And what is critical is that we help you put speed behind your development program as well to help it move quickly into the next stage, attract capital beyond non-dilutive funding and grants that will not get you fully to the speed that you need to drive your company creation. So that's what we're here to do. Next slide, please. Um, just as an example of the types of companies that we are working with and types of PI. So we have currently programs ongoing with PIs across Canada um, in, for antibody generation and development in the oncology space. We are very active in the gene therapy space, the oncolytic virus therapy space, cell therapy space, and uh, IPSC space. So these are just, you can see a breadth of technologies that we're working with. Of course, we're also very experienced and active in small molecule generation, hit to lead and IND, um, IND enabling candidate selection for small molecule development. Some of the types of biotech companies that we work with, so existing SMEs, we're focused on targeted alpha therapies, which is a new um, area of targeted radiation therapy. And we hope to be able to tell you more about that in the near term in, uh, in additional announcements. Um, we're working actively with gene therapy companies to help um, validate their um, gene editing technologies. We're working with neuronal rescue therapy companies and also um, companies that are using artificial intelligence for drug repurposing and generation of novel drugs against compelling targets. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is an example of one of the things that we're doing right now that is specifically focused on SMEs 
and PIs. And this is an initiative called Carry that we launched a few weeks ago. And this is in the radio pharmaceutical space that I just mentioned. And we, along with our national colleagues at in Hamilton, the Center for Probe Development and Commercialization, have launched a specific program that provides cash and in-kind contributions to help you advance your developments in the radio pharmaceutical space. And there is um, um, up to $200,000 available um, for your programs to help um, drive value creation and advance them. Some of the activities can be um, helping you establish drug development plans around your technologies. We can help to de-risk um, data-wise in terms of generating proof of principle data to support the advancement and commercialization of your technologies. Um, the program is open all year long. There's no deadline for applications, but we would love to hear from um, any of you who are in this space or, or would like to hear more about this space. The projects can be anywhere from one to two years. As I mentioned, there is um, uh, non-dilutive funding available to you for up to $200,000. And some of the offerings that we include, and these are the exact kind of things that we know PIs and SMEs need help with in the very early stages of their technology development and translation. We can help with research, we can help with business development, uh, CMC, we can help with commercialization and IP strategies, we can assist in bench work to help you advance your technologies. So there really is a large uh, number of offerings and ways that we can help you advance your technologies. Next slide, please. So I think I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Laura McIntosh, another venture partner in the Montreal space. But what I, what I wanted to say in closing is, we really look forward to hearing from you and see how we can help you and your team, whether you're an academic um, group or an SME, help advance and translate your technologies closer towards commercialization. So thanks very much for taking the time to speak with us today. So Laura, over to you. Well, thanks so much, Lana and Munya, for giving such a great overview of Admari's capabilities and initiatives. Um, I am very pleased to be the newest member of the venture team. Uh, I started in July of this year, and I'm, it's really been a fabulous time working with this great team of people at Admari to take uh, uh, your um, ideas and innovations to the next step. Briefly, I'm a cell biologist by training and have been involved in product development and leading R&D teams in the life sciences in Canada for my entire career, really, since doing a postdoc. I was first focusing on the medical device field, but most recently, and for most of my career, have been um, working in the biologics development, proteomics, and in microbiome research. As Lana said, my role as a venture partner is to really advance preclinical to early stage clinical drug development programs to achieve commercialization or scale up goals. So I work with both um, investigators and um, biotech companies. Just quickly before I go into the case study, um, I'd also like to say that in addition to the focus areas and the portfolio programs mentioned by Lana, um, we are currently actively seeking partnerships in the microbiome therapeutic space. So we'd be happy to speak with any of you that might have technologies in this area. But now I would like to discuss a recent case study that really highlights all of the things that Munya and Lana said previously about how we can partner with academic PIs, bring in funding and support to form a company around this collaboration. So our collaboration started in 2017 when we um, were CDRD with Dr. Philippe Segala from the Neuro at McGill University. He, Dr. Segala is an expert in ASIC biology. ASIC um, or acid sensing ion channels are a gene family of neuronal receptors that play a role in multiple neurological disorders. And Dr. Segala had developed a platform in ASIC channels. We partnered with him to perform a screening program to identify compounds that block these ASIC channels, and a lead series of compounds was identified from that screening program. Early research showed that blocking ASICs elicited analgesia in chronic 
pain conditions. Could we go to the next slide? Great. So based on this very promising early work, a new company, Neurasic, was launched in June 2020 by Admare, um, Amarchem, which is a leading early stage venture capital fund, and McGill. As Lana mentioned, we worked with Dr. Sagela to build out the development path. And the goal of the company is to provide new opiate sparing pain relieving drugs. We are first focusing on blocking ASIC 1A channels and are advancing this first series to identify a clinical stage molecule. Now, I think it's in, um, important um, to understand that we operate uh, our new companies as efficiently and effectively as possible so that most of the funding goes to the actual research. So we do things virtually in order to maximize this funding when it makes sense. We do things in Admare's labs in the collaborator or the partner labs, in this case McGill, or at contract research organizations, really whichever makes the most sense and where the expertise lies. We have put in place a very small but nimble management and research team of experienced drug developers to oversee the company who are listed here. And of course, we stay in close contact with Dr. Sigella with, by having biweekly scientific meetings. For this particular technology, Admare has really led and enabled the company formation by bringing the management, scientific and business support, as well as capital. We utilized our network to bring in additional investment from Amarchem, and of course, we'll work to bring in additional funding when required. So I hope that I've been able to give you a bit of a flavor of a type of partnership that we can form. And we really do, as Lana said, hope to be able to create similar types of partnerships with um, the people on this webinar today, resulting in company creation. With that, I'll turn it back over to Munya to um, sum up. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Lana and Loha, for these very clear examples. Next slide, please. I want just to thank you all, and I hope that we have convinced you that we are first open for partnerships with both academics and SMEs, and that we are a single stop destination with all the necessary resources, including scientific expertise, business expertise, infrastructure and capital to translate so your early stage innovations into companies of scale. Next slide, please. This is uh, to show you the partnership team in Vancouver. So I encourage you to contact anyone from the team to discuss further and explore any kind of partnership on your specific project. Next slide, please. A very last word to thank our funding partners, the Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada, the Ministère de l'Economie et de l'Innovation du Québec et la Ville de Montréal. So thank you all. Now we can take your questions. So as I say at, at the beginning, please use the Q&A section to, uh, to ask your questions. And I will invite Solana and Laura to join me to basically try to answer all your questions or comments. I don't see there any question yet. I will ask my colleagues, uh, Shirley and Anna, if they see any question. I have, uh, I don't think that I have the administrator to be able to see them. Hi, Monia, this is Lana. I actually yes. just got a question by private email. Okay. That's, <laughs> well, that's wonderful. All of my email. <laughs> Always are good. So, uh, yeah. So the question was, what's the best way to get in touch? So maybe your last slide touched upon that. And what's the timing wise and process in terms of when can we expect to hear?
sorry. Lena, no, I didn't hear your question. I think you, you were hear? frozen. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing okay. you. So um, the question was, um, what is the best way to get in touch with Admari as a primary point of contact? And what are the timeframes once, uh, once an investigator or SME engages with Admari, how quickly do you expect, can they expect to hear back from us? And um, can you walk us through a little bit the process? Sure, sure. So uh, the 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 regarding you know how how to contact us. Basically, you know we, we, you have on our website or our emails. Uh, you can contact anyone so from the uh, partnership team. But you can if you have also uh, early contacts and uh, special you know contacts within the organization. For example, you know Lana, you know Loha. Just please, you know we have just one entry but we are communicating and we are really working as a team so anyone on on our side that will see a, a, a potential opportunity will share it with the other ones and we will discuss it as a team so please uh, the, the 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 way that is convenient on your side is uh, we, we will work with it uh, the the uh, Regarding, you know, what kind of, uh, for example, information we need, usually, you know, a slide, a general slide deck uh, uh, or a one pager, basically highlighting what is the opportunity, what is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what, what, what is the differentiation, what is the NMET medical need, uh, what, at which stage the project is, is usually sufficient on our side just to see as a first step what we named the triage to see if it is something that fits within our expertise, that fits within our portfolio. So usually a general high level information is enough. Regarding the time frame and the timelines, we, you can expect an answer from the outside in about a week or two maximum. Usually we have our regular triage meeting, so we receive application, we receive new opp potential opportunities, we meet as a team every week, we look at all the opportunities and we will get back to you very quickly with asking more information if it is something that fits within our portfolio, asking some more questions sometimes, also just to understand better the technology and be able to see where it fits and, and, and what we think about what will be the most promising way to advance that specific uh, technology. Or we will get back to you, you know, by saying basically uh, that this is not, you know, within our portfolio and we will give you the reasons why and we will guide you to our network but what is important to understand is that usually we get back to you quickly but we will get back to you with any kind of any 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 uh, 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 with guidelines also with opening our network because we have as you saw in our, our partnership slide we have a wide range and a wide uh, partners across Canada so we will be able to guide you uh, through, you know, the different commercial routes, the different uh, investment uh, network, etc. We will be able to guide you so that you can uh, advance your technology and advance discussions uh, regarding your specific technology. Lana, anything to add on your side? No, thanks, Munya. That was um, really comprehensive. I don't know, um, since I have the mic, I, I got another question as well. Um, in terms of, here's the question, how, how do you help us access funding? And does Admare um, offer direct funding or is it just in-kind lab support that you provide? So do you wanna, I'm putting you on the spot again to answer questions. <laughs> Laura and I can jump in as well, but- Of course, take a start no you? problem, I can take a start. So usually, you know, as I said in, in the presentation, we have quite a, a, a an important level of capital that uh, that we can directly invest into companies. So we are not providing just in kind. You know, for us, the in kind is just just the lab work that we will do. Basically, when we see a technology and when we we work on the development plan for a specific project for a specific new opportunity, we will build the most mm, most uh, compelling development plan to take us to the, the different steps and to take us into, you know, a, a success of the company, we will have 
go no go milestones etc we will build the budget and we will provide all the budget to bring the technology to its next steps whether we use internally admire resources as an what we name in kind service but we will also provide the in kind service regarding our ip group regarding our marketing group our our our, our, our business development group that will all help you know to bring the technology at, at at another level so we will provide all the capital whether it is as i said within admire premise within the lab and the academic lab setting because we, you have developed the best model, uh, whether it is in vitro or in vivo to validate, for example, the molecules. So we will do the work in your lab and we will pay for that work. And we will work also and we will pay for the work that will be done outside with CROs when it's time to do some experiments that are critical and that and, and, and where the, the, uh, the expertise is not within Admari or within the lab of the PI. So usually we will bring all the capital. Of course, we are always open to collaborations and to co-investment. So we work very closely with the network around, with the the uh, the, uh, the investors across the country to, to 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 see whether there is an interest on their side to co-fund and co-invest and 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 bring more meat into the more capital, more breath into the, the company to to bring it further. That's a great way to put it, Munya. More breath. <laughs> I like to say that capital is the oxygen um, that that uh, brings life to the technology and helps advance it. Unfortunately, um, it needs money to advance. Um, that no, that's a great answer. And uh, a, a follow-on question to that was. Um, what is the scope of investment that Edmari can make? And what why don't I just jump in and say to just to follow follow up on what you said, Edmare can do a classical investment, which is a cash investment into companies. And that's typically on the order of anywhere from oh, up 500,000 as a million or 1.5 million, depending upon the scope of, of what's um, what what is needed to really drive the technology. As you mentioned, we like to do syndicates. We are very well connected to VCs both in Canada and beyond. And we see that as part of our mission to help bring additional funding um, into, your, um, into your program. And um, of course, as, as, uh, as Munya said, we all also look to see the kind of work that we can provide, not only um, with external funding to help um, engage critical CROs, but also that uh, rolling up our sleeves and doing some work at our end as well at our facilities and making our scientists available to help drive um, you know, um, experimental and proof of concept data generation studies. So um, what I would say is um, there's probably no minimum. We can do, we, we do we can do some smaller stage programs as well. But um, you know, we're we're not shy in making um, what what would be a substantial investment in, in uh, early stage opportunity. Um, if if we work with you and find that we really think this is ready to to translate now, and I think that's a critical point that um, when you come to us and you're talking to us, we always look to add value. Whether or not you choose to partner with us, whether or not um, we go forward with you, we see ourselves as part of this community and are happy to really um, add value in looking at your technology. And when you're when you're a young fledgling technology, it's good to talk to several people and get lots of different ideas. So we're we're, we're happy to help and add value wherever we can. So Munya or Laura, anything else that you wanted to add on that point? No, I think you, you covered it very well, Anna. Thank you. Now I'll I'll jump in. This is Laura. I see a few other questions on email. Um, one of the questions is um, how early in terms of science will you look? Um, so I'll take the first stab and then Lana, you can jump in. <laughs> so on that question, as Lana said, we really look to, uh, our sweet spot is really in that tr early translational space. So we looked at preclinical uh, types of projects that have some initial proof of concept. So um, maybe not necessarily the candidate, but some potential candidates with with a target that is 
known or close <laughs> close to being known. So as we say, we, we, we are flexible, but we do sort of like to have that proof of concept and then we will we will come in and, and help to um, finalize sort of the um, the lead candidate uh, along the way. Would you like to jump in, um, Lana? Sure. Yeah, no, that, that's right, Laura. You know, there's two types of when we think about the types of opportunities we see, we, we see opportunities for um, lead sort of single programs and assets moving forward and th and that's great and we we like those types of opportunities what's really interesting as well is we like to look at those opportunities what you may see as a single opportunity and say there's actually a platform opportunity here and platform opportunities of course give multiple shots on goal for multiple products and we really like to take a look at, at um, those types of opportunities or find or create those types of opportunities by bringing together, you know, we, we try and conceive how we can pull different, um, different technologies and programs together to build out a platform company um, that can really drive innovation. So if you're thinking about a single, say for example, you're focused on a single technology to drive um, innovation against a um, specific CAR-T target um, for a rare um, that, um, you're, that you're working on. And then we'll look to see, is there another broader opportunity um, to be able to build a pipeline of opportunities around your technology. So that's really exciting for us as well. Thank Great. So you. Hopefully I didn't lose everyone. Munya, back to you. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank thank you. Uh, I'm trying to look at the system, sorry. I think that no, there is no more question. And I think that we can wrap up a little bit uh, uh, earlier, early, uh, I would just want to mention that we will be sharing the presentation with the people that have uh, registered and uh, so we will send you the presentation after the webinar. And of course, if you had any follow up question, anything that comes into your mind, please don't hesitate to contact us and we will be really happy to engage the discussion. So uh, thanks again, and in, in the name of my colleagues, Aplana, Laura, thanks so much for joining this webinar and spending uh, with us a few minutes. Uh, I really look forward to connecting with you soon. Uh, so take care and have a great day.